up, everybody? Welcome to our channel. My name's Brylin. And I'm Lisa. And today we have a super special funny challenge. So we were gonna do, um, we were gonna try to think of some tips and stuff for doing a Bible study together with your spouse. And we got a bunch of questions actually. So we chose a few questions and we're gonna answer those questions instead for this video. And I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, so the first question is from Britt V. West and she was asking if we prefer to study separate and then come together or do we study together for the first time? Pretty much every day we have our own study time and we always end up coming together and one of us is like, check out what I read just this morning. You yeah. were, <laughs> you did that. <laughs> we like to have a time, you know, either sometimes it's early in the morning. Yeah. And, but a lot of times it's before bed. Yeah. In the evening. Yeah. We, we like to read something completely different than what we're reading on our own. Mm -hmm. So right now we're going through Genesis. Yeah. And we actually read it together yeah. when we're doing this specific study time. Okay, so then we had a couple questions that we put together. One was from Megan Oregon and one was from Aaron M. Buck. Hey, Aaron. Um, you guys said, does one of you pick a theme or passage and lead the study? And does this get done in turns? And then also, how do you find new studies? How do you decide what to study? We decided to put all these together because they kind of, we have like an answer for all of it <laughs> together. <laughs> So for us, the way we like to do it is we like to pick a book of the Bible and go through that entire book. So each day that we're studying it together, we're just like picking up where we left off, like in the next chapter of that book of the Bible. Most of the time we read a whole chapter, but sometimes we'll get to a part where we just we just get into a deep discussion. Yeah. And we'll end up like going through other parts of the Bible or looking up commentaries and we get so caught up in that one part because we want to know exactly what it's meaning, yeah. we don't like to jump around. Yeah. Like we're gonna read this today, that tomorrow, this over here. We like to be, we like to f just go through an entire book of the Bible and get as much from it as we can. Yeah, there's a couple of reasons for that. One thing is context. When yeah. you're reading an entire book of the Bible, you're understanding what each like part of that book is saying within the whole context of the book. I feel like it's very easy to pick and choose and jump around in our Bibles, but you're never going to get like the full clear picture when you're doing that. Yeah. And sometimes it can be very easy to take things out of context. Another thing is that it also helps with like knowing each time that you come together and study, you're not trying to think of, okay, what are we going to read now? And like you spend a ton of time just trying to figure out, yeah. what you're going to actually read. And when study. he's like, I want to read this. I want to read this. I yeah. want to read this. And you're like playing tug of war with the Bible. Which we've done before. Just kidding. Yes, we have. Well, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and one way to choose a, a, a book of the Bible that can fit both of you is if one of you is like wanting to read a New Testament, like Acts or Romans or something. And one of you is like, no, I want to read the Old Testament. I want to read like a Psalm or, or Genesis even. Yeah. Flip a coin and let the coin decide. Let fate decide. <laughs> you can't go wrong with any book of the Bible. I yeah. mean, <laughs> every single book, you're going to take something and, and, and have spiritual growth from it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, it's a win-win either way. This isn't like a battle to choose the best book of the Bible to read. And remember, you're always going to have the rest of your lives to read the other book that you want to read, yeah. to read all 66 books of the Bible. So let the, let the coin decide, or maybe just have grace and say, okay, honey, we could read that book, but we're reading Psalms next. <laughs> Make it a threat. That's what I do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Who leads the study? Does this get done in turns? For us, it's not really about leading the yeah. study. Neither one of us really leads it. I would say for me, I read it each time though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't switch off on reading and, and not because I'm like, I am Mel. <laughs> I am alpha male. <laughs> the only reason why we personally, why I read each time is because I learn better yeah. by reading it out loud, by reading it and hearing myself read it. I feel like I can grasp what the passage is saying and everything when he's reading it to me. So he, just because this is how it works better for us, this is the way we do it. If both of you learns better by reading it, then switch off. Um, and, and really just and, and make the discussion part, you know, uh, 
because that's another huge part of learning it is discussing yeah. what you read. So really make it a priority to figure out how you learn best and let your spouse read every time if that's how they learn. Yeah. Or let them listen every time. Okay, so the next couple questions we kind of group together as well. This one's from M-G-G-Z-G-L-D-N. Oh, Maggie's Golden or something like that. And then Mrs. Sorry, I'm going to get this wrong. Co... Co... Cano... Cano... Canovalova. Canovalova. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys asked, how do you make it a routine? Do you do it daily or weekly? How do you balance it with your personal study? Do you have a specific time you study together? How do you plan it? So for us, it's not a thing we do every single day, but we do it most days. We do it several times a week, I would say. We definitely like to make it a priority. Yeah. And it's something, like like I said earlier, we like to do it before bed. Mm -hmm. So we'll read before bed and... Most nights we feel like we can't go to sleep until we've read because it's just become a part of yeah. our routine. But it's not do or die. We don't look at it as, oh man, we're not going to get our spirit points if we don't read before bed. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever that means. It's definitely not something that we stress out about. Yeah, exactly. I would say four to five nights every week. Yeah, is when we do that. And then there is probably like once a week we'll actually do it in the morning because maybe we have to like be somewhere and we're like, oh, let's just do our study together this morning rather than mm. doing our personal studies. But besides that, we always do our personal studies in the morning time. So that's kind of how we balance it. Again, this is going to be different for every single couple because it just depends on your guys' schedule. Uh, try to figure out a time when you can get together and study the word. Maybe it is only once a week you're able to do that. Maybe it is every day or a few times a week. Uh, but be flexible with each other. Uh, just know and understand each other's schedule and see, okay, when's a good time when we can just, you know, have a few minutes and read the word together and talk about it. And then Southern T asked, Ooh. how do we, yeah, I like your I like username. Your name. <laughs> <laughs> how do you communicate through it? Oh, uh, we don't. We don't talk at all. No. <laughs> One way we communicate is to not skip over anything that um, maybe stands out to us. We don't. Oh, that looks too hard. So we're just gonna we're just gonna sweep that under the rug and keep reading. We try to stop and really discuss and dissect what you know certain parts that stand out to us that maybe I'm not getting, but Lisa's like, oh, this is what it means totally. Yeah. Or maybe or the other way versa. around. Yeah. So. We really make it a priority to discuss the parts that we're having trouble maybe understanding at that point. We also just try to share what stood out to us or what we felt like God put on our hearts when we were reading that scripture. And then a lot of times too, uh, like Bri will be reading and sometimes I'll be like, wait a second. Why, why do you think this happened? Like yeah. a question will just pop into my mind and rather than waiting because I might forget it, I just go ahead and ask it right then. So don't be afraid to like interrupt, interrupt the study and like ask questions or ask questions at the end too. Like ask each other because maybe one of you has insight on something or maybe you're both kind of like, I don't know, but then you can dig deeper yeah. with your commentary or cross-reference and uh, see try to find the answers to those questions and talking about communication during our study we had a really good question from Nunez wifey and she said do you ever get in disagreements on a topic all the time do we i wouldn't say all the time but sometimes oh okay, okay. i want to clarify i don't think we've ever gotten in arguments no over a topic but we've definitely have seen things differently before well and i think it comes back to context too yeah. maybe there's a part that you know, Lisa is like deeply studied in, in, you know, a certain book of the Bible. And I'm not like as refreshed on that part. And I say something and she's like, well, no, I think it was talking about this. And then it's like, well, are you sure? And then we'll look into it deeper yeah. and then we'll see what, it, what, what does it say says. word for word? What does it say? And then whoever has the heart that's like out of place, you have to fix your heart yeah. to line up with scripture. It is a hundred percent what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And what the Bible says, 100%. The Bible always has the final word. So the way we deal with it is if we're like, 
wait, I think it's meaning this. And then he's like, I think it's meaning this. Okay, we'll, we'll look into it. We'll study it more. And this is where you have to be open and you have to understand that you might be wrong and that's okay to be wrong because this is a discussion you're having, you're studying, you're learning, and it's okay. We're going to be wrong sometimes or a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just where you, you look at the word, you see what it says and see what's the truth. The Bible always has the final word and the final say. Always make sure that your thoughts and your heart and your feelings on a, on a particular scripture mm-hmm. line up with what it's actually saying. Yeah. It's not up for interpretation. Yeah, I think that can be hard. Sometimes we want to put our feelings in everything, but especially with studying the word, you kind of need to set your feelings aside a lot yeah. of the times True. because it's not about how we just feel about something. It's God's word is, the, is what's truth. And sometimes our feelings don't align with that. Just remember when you are studying together, this doesn't need to be some like heated debate or topic if you guys have a disagreement. It's like, oh, okay, we obviously we see this differently. Let's see what the word says. It's about growing closer to, to, to Christ. Yeah, um, and growing closer to each other. Yeah, so don't let it be overly complicated. Just read God's word together and try to figure out what it's saying exactly for what it is. Yeah. Together. Next question is a really good question too. We've definitely have experienced this before. Uh, Franchi, is that how you say it? Franchi. Franchi1316 said, how do you study together when your spouse is in a dry season? Mm. Well, I think the most important thing to remember uh, with that question is, I, I can't even count as many times as I've been in a dry season throughout my life. Same here. Just feeling like as I read God's word, I'm not really getting anything from it. Just spiritually each and every day might just feel kind of dull or bland. The important thing to remember is that it all comes down to obedience. Mm-hmm. Staying obedient in your time spent in God's word and in your time in prayer and in your time just trying to nurture your soul. So maybe through that you can go to your spouse and just say, hey, I'm here for you. We can read the word together. Maybe that's what it takes Yeah, is reading the word together. Maybe uh, that alone Bible study is just isn't fruitful at this time. And you can come together and you begin to study together and talk about it yeah. and you start to discuss and then you start to get the insights from your from your wife's brain or your your husband's brain and then you go I didn't see it like that yeah but it totally makes sense exactly. like thank you and then you'll say something that sparks in them so having that discussion is super important and maybe the key to uh you know kind of being rejuvenated is coming together and having that yeah that bible study together i feel like one of the biggest things you can do is your spouse, like you're in this together and you are there to be their helpmate and to encourage them. So one of the biggest things you can do is to encourage them and maybe to be the one that's initiating that study. And maybe you kind of take on like a little bit more of the responsibility of the study, be like, hey, like let's read this together. And then Another big thing is praying for them through that dry season. We're all going to experience dry seasons as believers. And it's so important that we have somebody there to kind of help pick us up and, you know, walk with us through those dry seasons. And it reminds me of a scripture, um, Ecclesiastes 4.10. It actually starts in Ecclesiastes 4.9. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? Wow. And that's that's just like how it is in a marriage. You know, you're there for each other. Uh, when one person is struggling or is going through a dry season, the other one is there to kind of lift them up and encourage them through that. And we have definitely have both experienced this and had to have been kind of like in either role at different seasons of our marriage. (laughs) And one person's fire and excitement for the word can help ignite the others. But the biggest thing again, prayer. Always be praying for your spouse no matter what season. And then Allison Reed Clark said, my husband isn't much of a talker, so how do we 
still like discuss and do a study together if like one spouse isn't much of a talker well i have to say for us personally i think we're both real talkers so we have yeah. problems shutting up what are you <laughs> trying to say what are you trying to say you're trying to say that i talk all the time like i just that's all i do is ramble do like nothing i say has meaning i just <laughs> oh ramble gosh. all the time uh, again i think the key there would be prayer uh, but also just encouragement yeah don't make it something that's forced to say you have to talk to me you have to say something it's just say, I'm here if you want to talk about it. Yeah. And maybe, you know, it's just, hey, do you want to sit with me as I read the word? And then you can read the word. Maybe you start off with discussing what you got from it and just see how he responds. But without making it something to where it's, you know, like, like trying to force that yeah. conversation. Don't, don't put expectations on the other person to have this like whole like long discussion and share all this stuff if they're not normally prone to do that you know what I mean uh, start with you sharing your heart and then kind of leave it open and if they want to share something then cool if not then go on to the next day and you know hopefully like over time that's going to spark more discussion and more openness and being able to talk to each other and there's no more perfect way to start than in God's word. Yeah. You know, maybe there's communication, you know, troubles there, you know, not being able to communicate the right way on a lot of stuff. But when you bring it to God's word, uh, you know, the, God can do anything. He can, he can absolutely put words in the mouth of someone who doesn't know what to say. Yeah. So, um, I, I don't, don't feel, don't fret. Like it's not, it's not the end. It's not, the, you know, like the, there's no communication ever. Yeah. Um, it's just maybe building that communication through discussing what God's word has to say. I think that would be the perfect, most valuable way to start. And when he does share, be like, you know, be excited and interested in what he has to say. Yeah. Okay. So our very last question. <laughs> Our very last question is from Red Lip Sass and Class. Whoa! She said, how do you motivate your spouse to study the Bible if he's not that into it? So not having full context, there's a couple ways to look at that. Is If they're not that into it, are they a believer and they're just not that into reading God's word? Or maybe it's a dry season? Or... Are they not a believer and they're not into it because they don't want anything to do with God or yeah. the Bible? We already kind of talked about the dry season sort of thing, um, but whether they're a belie if they're a believer and they're just like not wanting to study the Word, I feel like it almost needs to be treated as a spouse married to somebody who isn't a believer because they don't have that passion for God or that even like that willing or that desire. To yeah. be in God's word. And what we can learn from the Bible is that the best thing you can do is to be an example for your spouse. So mm -hmm. you do your personal study, be studying God's word, and pray for your spouse. Like those are the two biggest things you can do. Um, the Bible just says to be graceful and live at peace with your spouse. You're not trying to force something upon them or, you know pressure them into reading the Bible when they don't want to. Making it a priority to communicate what you personally read in the Bible and what yeah. it's done for you and what it means to you and how, you know, this part of God's word, this scripture really helped me in this part of my life. I was feeling kind of down, but this scripture really helped me. Whatever it might be, make it a priority to talk yeah. to him about what scripture means to you. You could just be like, hey, I was reading my Bible today and something really stood out to me. Can I share it with you? And your excitement could ignite something in yeah. them. <laughs> and maybe their their reason for not wanting to be you know get into the Bible is because they're intimidated by it. I mean, it's a huge book and there's a lot to it. One big thing is that you can be encouraging to say, hey, I'm here for you if you ever want to read the Bible together. And just remind them. Uh, maybe it's once a week. Don't Again, don't, don't overdo nag. it. Don't yeah. nag. <laughs> but just periodically just remind them, hey, I'm here for you. If you want to read the Bible, yeah. I, I'll, I'll help you or I'll read it with you or um, how, however best you think they're going to receive it to just say, I'm here for you and I'm here with you, at, you know, if you want to get started on reading the Bible. Um, and again, if it's just a matter of having a heart that's 
hardened kind of against the Bible, that's not wanting to get into it because there's no belief in God there. Uh, prayer and being an mm-hmm. example. Um, yes. Don't ever be ashamed of what you read and what you read and what God's Word has done in your life. And again, make it a point to share what God's Word means to you and how it's helped you. And pray. Pray, pray, pray. <laughs> pray. I mean, just continue to pray. Day and night when you wake up in the morning, pray. When you go to sleep at night, pray. Okay. Say, God, I just pray that you would soften their heart and, and give them a desire to be in your word. And then set the example of what it means to be in God's word and let God do his work. Exactly. So again, thank you for all your questions. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any more questions on this topic that we didn't cover, you can leave them in the comments below and we'll either try to answer you guys or include them in a future video. Mm. Uh, But we love you guys. And oh, remember to follow us on Instagram. You can follow me at Lisa M. Riggs. And me at Brylan Riggs. And we'll see you guys in our next video. Bye.